Well, thank you for joining us today to learn a little bit more about three projects the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board is working on this summer and going across the city to provide information to residents. One of them is Close the Gap, another one is RecQuest, and the third one is Service Area Master Plans. I'm Jennifer Ringgold. I'm the Deputy Superintendent for the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, and I'll be spending the next little bit of time with you telling you more about these projects. As we get into this, I want you to think about really two key questions that we're looking at uh, across the system right now. One of them is, what are we doing about our funding needs in the neighborhood parks? And the second one is, what are we looking for in our system over the next 25 to 30 years? What are the strategic changes we should be making? And how do we want to be better serving the residents of Minneapolis? That first question really ties in with closing the gap, which looks at our neighborhood funding needs. And that second question focuses specifically on RecQuest, which looks at our recreation centers and service area master plans, which looks at the exterior of the facilities within our neighborhood parks. The focus of our conversation today, however, is really around neighborhood parks. These are our parks that are somewhere between one to six blocks in size. They hold the primary assets that neighborhoods use, whether it's a recreation center, a wading pool, a playground and they are funded primarily through local tax dollars. So they're primarily funded by the funding that's gathered within the city of Minneapolis. So closing the gap, what do we know about the funding issues within our neighborhood parks? We know since about 2000, the board has really been focusing on what we're going to be doing from a neighborhood park perspective on, on funding. And we have started to see in that time period that from both an operating as well as a capital perspective, the current level of infrastructure, the current level of need that we have within our system is outpacing the level of um, funding that we have. And the board is interested in making sure residents across the city are aware of the concerns that we have or are starting to have around funding our neighborhood parks. If we were to look at mowing, we know we've got 2,750 acres of lawn that needs to be mown throughout the neighborhood park system. We know that currently it takes 14 days, so essentially two weeks, to get completely through that system. Ideally, we would be doing that in about a 10-day cycle. To move from 14 to 10 days would be uh, an additional $875,000 the board would need to invest in mowing activities in order to be able to achieve that, kind of close that gap between 14 and 10 days. And there are several other categories where you can see that similar type of uh, increase in cost that would be to take it from our current level to the desired level. In total, that equates to about $3 million additional needed per year. It's important to note that a, a system of the size of the Minneapolis Park and Recreation System it, and the age of it is uh, a common, it, it's, we're not alone, I should say, in terms of uh, infrastructure being behind, in terms of being, um, being improved. The Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board has a few things in place that it's doing. First of all, um, in February of 2015, it conducted a statistically valid phone survey to get a better understanding of people's perceptions of the parks, what's working, what's not working, their interest in um, potential funding strategies for the parks, their needs around programs, services, and infrastructure. Then from May until September, the board is going out to neighborhoods across the city, visiting with residents, trying to get an understanding of residents' preferences around improvements in the parks, as well as ideas for um, addressing the funding gap. And then from October through December, the board will be looking at all the data we've collected and beginning to determine what their next step is going to be to address the funding gap. In terms of next steps, we hope you would go online, take a look at the park profiles for your area, and fill out the survey that's available online. On September 29th, we have experts coming in from other cities who have addressed some of these same issues. They will be in a panel discussion September 29th from 6 until 7.30 p.m. at the Walker Art Center. So please join us there. Thank you.